Hello, welcome to example one of TrickSub video. And we're going to um, work through together this example, the area from zero to two, square root of 16 minus x squared. Now, if that two is a four, we can use geometry. That right there, that function is a, is a circle. Y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared is the upper half of a circle of radius four centered at the origin and that from zero to four you have a quarter of that circle the upper half of it and so uh, yeah a quarter of that would be uh, one quarter of the pi r squared but it's not it's zero to two problematic we need to use trig substitution which one though well if you're in the format of a squared minus x squared then you let x equal a sine theta so in this case a is four you should let x equal four sine theta why well, what's going to happen why would you do this substitution there's two terms in your integral there's the radical and there's dx please don't forget the dx your first step sh should be to pick the correct tricks up your second step should be to substitute every term if there's some canceling cancel so I've color coded these. I'm going to substitute for these two terms. First, let's just get dx out of the way. I mean, if x is equal to four sine theta, right away we can find out that dx is equal to four cosine theta, d theta. The radical, it's equal to four cosine theta. That's the reason why this trick up works so well. You see, when you put x equals four sine theta in, it takes this radical and replaces it with a simple trig function. And that's the algebra behind how it works there so we put these two together we're in an integral now that has theta in terms of theta it's a trig integral okay all right great 16 times the cosine square times the integral of the cosine squared theta d theta now uh, it's a subtle thing that i did there um there there are no limits of integration on the integral right now the theta integral uh we'll we'll tackle that in a second but for now let's treat it as an indefinite integral now the point behind this is now that we switch this we should be able to integrate so let's do it let's integrate to integrate cosine squared you need a previous technique about integrating powers of trig functions when the power of cosine is even then um, this is your uh, approach and there are no signs around or anything like that so what you need to do is go to uh, an identity it's called a um, half angle identity you replace cosine squared with one half the quantity of one plus the cosine of double theta why did we do that why would you do that that's because you can integrate it once you put that in pull the half out with the 16 you got an 8 out there you integrate 1 with respect to theta integrate cosine 2 theta with respect to theta nice easy antiderivative there we get theta as the antiderivative of one and half of the sine of two theta as the antiderivative of cosine two theta. So we brought in trig so that we could integrate and now we've integrated and we have this function here who is the antiderivative, but it's in the wrong variable. So we have two choices here. This was a definite integral to start out with. We had an integral from zero to two. So we could take these X numbers zero and two and convert them into theta numbers. Or we could abandon that and go with the reference triangle and have that as the connecting factor between theta and x. And so on the next slide, I'll do both approaches. Now for one particular problem, you only pick one approach, okay? Don't do them both. But just know that uh, if your integral is indefinite to start out with, if there are no bounds of integration, then you have no choice but to do the reference triangle. So you can't ignore that method. So here we go. We have um, the original integral and our substitution. This substitution gives us the integral at 16 cosine squared. We've integrated that. We have the antiderivative. And now we're at a crossroads trying to figure out how to finish this problem out. And I'm going to have them both displayed on this slide here. On the left hand, we're going to do the limit switch. On the right hand, we're going to do the reference triangle. Okay. When I do a limit switch, I like to have an organized chart. I like to have what the original values are, the actual substitution that I made, 
and then I work to figure out what the new values are. So I started with an upper limit of 2 and a lower limit of 0, that's x. My substitution was to let x equal 4 sine theta. So this 2 is going to be equal to 4 sine theta. This 0 is going to be equal to 4 sine theta. Now to figure out what theta is, we should solve for the trig. Let's solve for sine theta. On the one hand, it's 2 over 4 or a half. On the other hand, it's just going to be a 0. And as long as there are nice recognizable unit circle angles that you could take sines and cosines of, then, then there's nothing wrong with doing this technique, I feel. Sometimes it won't be that way. We'll see in another example. But yeah, what angle plugged into sine spits out a half? Remember now, it must be an angle between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so that angle then would be pi over 6, 30 degrees. And then 0 is the angle that you plug into sine and have it spit out a 0. So these are now your new limits of integration. You have your antiderivative. You can just plug in these limits, fundamental theorem of calculus, and be done with the problem. So my recommendation is, if you have a choice, if you have, in, if you have a definite integral, then walk down this rope and see if it gives you nice unit circle angles. And then, yeah, plug them in. No trouble at all. Plug in pi over 6, double it. And then there's a theta out there. But when you plug in 0, it just gives you 0. Not always, but in this case, it does. The sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And then we can just um, multiply the 8 through, and we have our answer. 4 pi over 3 plus um, 2 times the square root of 3. Once you put the 8 in and the 4s in the denominator there. You did it. You found the area under that curve. Okay. With the limit switch technique. Now, let's say you didn't want to do that, and you don't have to do that. There's another option. It's called the reference triangle. It is built off of the original trig sub. Okay, x is equal to 4 sine theta. You solve for the trig, and you find out that the sine of theta is x over 4. You build a triangle with those directions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So go build a right triangle with the base angle theta, have the opposite be titled x, then the hypotenuse must be a 4, and then the missing side, in this case it's the adjacent side, it ends up being, using Pythagorean theorem or... Um, you can figure it out a different kind of way, but it ends up being that the adjacent side is this radical that got this whole thing started. 16 minus x squared. All right. You have your antiderivative in hand, but there's some issues we have to deal with. The sine of 2 theta is problematic. This, ain't, this, trick, this triangle is all about theta, not double theta. You can't just double the angle and think about like doubling the sides or anything wild like that. So we need to get from 2 theta back into theta. And there's an identity that will do that for you. It's the fact that the sine of twice theta is 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine theta. You're coming out of nowhere with these identities, so you need to have them readily available for you. If you're doing an antiderivative and you have a double angle, then we use one of these double angle formulas here to get us back into theta. Um, the 2, that's from 2 sine theta cosine theta, and the half can cancel each other. And now we're just going to replace theta, and we're going to replace this product here, sine theta, cosine theta. We already know what sine theta is. It's x over 4. We have to figure out what cosine theta is, and we have to figure out what theta is. And everything comes from the original trig sub. If x is 4 sine theta, and we know, then we could solve for the sine of theta and get x over 4, and then we can arc sine both sides to cancel out sine and get theta by itself. The replacement to theta is the arc sine of x over 4. The replacement to sine of theta is the x over 4. What about the replacement to cosine theta from the triangle? We know cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So just read off that the adjacent is the radical 16 minus x squared and the hypotenuse is a 4. Put the pieces together. Now notice here, I'm back with my original bounds. I waited to this point right here to bring them back in. Just don't get mixed up. Don't put, don't go putting x bounds on a theta integral or theta bounds on an x integral. Know the difference. Be very careful there. So I'm just going to put a 2 in, the original upper limit. I'm going to put a 0 in, the original lower limit. And what happens is that the 0 ends up zeroing out for us. Arc sine of 0 is 0. And then because of that first part of the product in red there, the 0 in the numerator zeroes out that whole product. Uh, the arc sine of a half. It's the same question that you answered over here. What angle do you plug into trig and have it spit out a half? It's, it's the pi over 6 that we got from before. 
um, and then plugging two in, 16 minus four is 12, you have root 12, which definitely can be you know, simplified to be two root three. And so we can then employ the eight in, distribute it in, and we have exactly the same answer as we did on the other side there. And so this is our first example of a trig sub. And um, we did the, uh, it was a type one where we had a squared minus x squared and there was just no other way to find that and we had to dig through this trig substitution another example coming in the next video if you have any questions don't be afraid to ask um and uh, i'm here to help thank you